We're getting hit with some mild solar storms, but thankfully solar flares are quieting down just in time for Hurricane Barrel. Those stories and more in the news this week. Space weather this week is really calming down compared to last week. As we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, we do still have a lot of active regions in Earth view, but a lot of them are really clustered here in the south. In fact, this set of bright regions right here, this is the old Ganon region that is making its third uh, trip across Earth view. But luckily this time things have really disintegrated a bit. It's made up of smaller regions that aren't all that flare active, and that is a godsend considering Hurricane Barrel is like a category four or five right now, and it's barreling down on Jamaica. So we're really appreciative that this region has managed to be quiet this time around. However, the area around it is still reasonably unstable. In fact, you can see some filaments here. Back about midday on the 29th, you can see this filament launch, whoosh, right like that. As we take a look at this in coronagraphs, you can see a gorgeous structure, very dense structure. This is moving out to the, mainly the southwest, uh, of Earth, but you can also see this wispy little finger here. This is actually what is one of the mild solar storms that's actually grazing Earth right now. We have been getting a little bit of an enhancement, even some aurora at high latitudes over the last couple days, mainly due to this structure. We'll talk more about it in a minute, as well as another one we'll see in just a second. In fact, as we take a look at the at region 3729, we see a little bit of a brightening right in here, and region 3733, you can see a little bit brightening right there. That was also a, a solar storm launch, and it's really hard to see this in coronagraphs because we had this uh, freestanding structure that's moving very, very slowly. But if you look carefully, you'll see a kind of a wall move right through this structure. And you try to show it to you right there. If you could see that moving through, that was a partially Earth-directed solar storm. And that one luckily has been also modeled by both NOAA and uh, by NASA. So we'll talk more about those storms. And we're expecting that one to be hitting us here over the next day. Once again, a very weak and mild storm. So we're not expecting all all that much. But outside of solar storm launches, we have been getting a little bit of flare activity. You can see region 3730 emerged here over the last day or two, and it has been firing off some very low level M-class flares just sporadically, but really not lasting all that long. And again, that is a, that's good news. We really don't want to be seeing any big solar flares right now because that makes it hard on the uh, amateur radio bands for those emergency responders to the hurricane. And that brings us to the east limb here. This region, a set of regions, we've been expecting this set of regions to be rotating into Earth view and we haven't been quite sure whether they'd be big flare players because last time around they were big flare players. But luckily, as we take a look at the Styx instrument from the solar orbiter on the sun's far side, we can actually see that even though we have been seeing a lot of flare activity on the sun's far side, moving right where we expect to see these regions, right about center disk and then moving off to the to the uh, west limb on the sun's far side, which means moving into Earth Q. So we are have been seeing a bit of flare activity, but believe it or not, most of these flares have been below the R1 radio blackout level. And that is great news because that means that the regions here on the east limb are likely going to rotate into Earth view and not give us all that much of a problem. But we do have some new regions uh, rotating into Earth view as well, and we're going to talk about those in just a minute. And now taking a closer look at our full sun map, we use SDO AIA imagery for the Earth facing sun and solar orbiter EUI imagery for the far side of the sun. And as we look at the Earth facing disk, you can see again, here's the Ganon region right here. That should orient you. And as we begin to look past the east limb to the sun's far side, you can see all of these regions in here. These are the ones that have been rotating into Earth view over the last 24 hours or so. These are the returning regions that we were afraid were going to actually be, be big flare players, but they've really managed to stay quiet. However, over the last couple days, you can actually see multiple new regions that have been growing on the sun's far side. We're going to be a little bit concerned about these because anytime you have uh, new regions they, uh, that grow quickly, they oftentimes can become big flare players really fast. So we're going to be watching these as they rotate into Earth view over the next maybe 
two to three days. And hopefully, if they're not growing too quickly, they'll continue to stay quiet because we could really use some radio quiet as long as we're dealing with Hurricane Barrel. And now returning to those mild solar storms that are on their way to Earth, we take a look at our solar storm prediction model, Enlil. Now this is NOAA's version of the model. The top panel's density, the bottom panel's velocity. You're looking down at the sun from the North Pole with Earth being off to the right. Now as we set this solar storm model in motion, you can see some of these solar storms that have been launched over this past week really slow. Most of them you can see this one is that big one that was going southwest of Earth. But you can see a few little Earth-directed wisps of solar storms coming at us. And it really makes for a very strange kind of timeline here. But NOAA is expecting that we've had just kind of a little bit of a graze uh, passage from that one solar storm, the first one, that big filament that was going southwest, didn't give us much. And indeed, we have been experiencing some really mild conditions. It's a little bit of a roar at high latitudes, but not a lot to get excited about. The second solar storm is going to be coming in through here and through this mess here. And we're expecting NOAA was expecting to see it right here about the fourth uh, early on. And that could give us a little bit of a bump up, probably not expecting all that much. It's going to be another wispy mini solar storm. So Aurora photographers, if you're at high latitudes, you might get a little bit of a show, not expecting anything at mid latitudes. In fact, maybe not even noticing anything at all. But we'll talk more about that in the five day. Now, as we also take a look at NASA's prediction, if I set there, again, this is an Enlil model, uh, but we're looking down at the sun from the North Pole with Earth being off to the right. Setting it in motion, you'll see that second wispy solar storm being launched. This solar storm, again, slightly, slightly to the south of Earth, causing yeah, not much of an impact here, but we're expecting something right about late on the 4th into the 5th, as you can see here. And that's, again, going to be a kind of a minor solar storm, maybe a little bit of something. That's going to be followed up by a little bit of fast wind as we move through the weekend. But again, not expecting all that much. And that's good news, especially for amateur radio operators and emergency responders who really need both day side and night side to be a bit quiet right now. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the third quarter phase on our way to a new moon, with the new moon being late on the 5th. And you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, like maybe some aurora, well, now is your perfect chance. But for you SAR responders, well, you better pack some night lights, because for this hurricane, the moon sure isn't going to be of any help. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, at high latitudes, NOAA is expecting those minor solar storms to be hitting starting around the 4th. So we're going to be expecting active conditions, but with up to about a 30% chance of a major storm. Now, that's not going to last all that long. Expecting right around the 5th things to be kind of calming down. We might get that second hit from that solar storm that NASA actually modeled. And if that's the case, then this will extend into the 5th before things settle down. But it should settle down pretty quickly because once again, these storms are quite mild. Now expect around the 7th and the 8th for us to hit maybe a pocket of fast solar wind. Again, not expecting it to be all that strong, but we do have about a 25% chance of active conditions starting around the 7th, and that could be come into active conditions by the 8th as the fast wind really begins to hit us. So uh, Aurora photographers, you could get a chance, but also for you emergency responders, be ready. We could get a little bit of problems if you want to be doing hurricane watch nets, especially up at high latitudes. Now, as we switch to a mid-latitude aurora possibilities, well, really everything is going to stay pretty much unsettled through the week. We do still have that storm watch, but we only have about a 20% chance of reaching active conditions at mid-latitudes and really not much of the chance of hitting active conditions at any other time this week. So that's good news for you watch nets down in mid-latitudes. You're probably going to have some smooth sailing. Uh, on the night side of Earth, so you don't have to worry about any solar storms causing problems for your radio communications. 
Now, switching to our solar flare and dayside radio blackout outlook over the coming week, we are sitting well in the triple digits for solar flux. We're sitting about 160 right now. We might actually dip down into the 150s here over this next week if those active regions on the far side of the sun really don't amount to all of that much because we have that Gannon region really rotating to the sun's far side here over this next week. So we are still expecting moderate noise on the bands. We do have a lot of active regions and a few of them like region 2730 are firing off uh, low level M-class flares every now and again. NOAA is giving us about a 35% chance of M-class flares at the R1 to R2 level, but only about a 5% chance of X-class flares at the R3 level. And this I'm going to continue easily through Saturday, likely around Sunday. I may drop it a little bit because I do think that we are going to see less of these big active regions. I'm keeping my fingers crossed because this is really good news for those who are having to work Hurricane Barrel. Uh, luckily, moderate noise, it's got the low end of moderate noise. We might even dip into minor noise on the bands. So just understand that you will have decent radio propagation on Earth's day side, and that should continue throughout this week. And now as we switch to our radiation storm and polar aviation outlook over this coming week, well, everything is in the green when it comes to radiation radiation storms. We're sitting at the D1 normal range. This is at flight level 360 for you aviators. It's also the S0 quiet range for everybody else. NOAA's only giving us about a 5% chance of a radiation storm at S1, S2 level, and that's good news. It's going to continue to be like that throughout the rest of this week. So you aviators, and this does mean flight crew and you frequent flyers, you're all in the clear, and this is also good news for you uh, GPS users and uh, you drone pilots who might be working the hurricane. So the space weather this week is staying quiet, thankfully. We do have a couple mild solar storms that have been hitting Earth over the past couple days and a couple more that will hit Earth right around the 4th and possibly into the 5th before things calm down. Aurora photographers, if you're at high latitudes, you might be able to celebrate the July 4th holiday with a little bit of aurora, but those at mid-latitudes will likely have to sit this one out and wait for bigger storms later. But this is good news for amateur radio operators and emergency responders, especially those responding to Hurricane Barrel. We do have so only mild storms, which means that we likely won't have much of an impact on Earth's night side and on Earth's day side. Well, we're not getting the big solar flares right now. The sun is taking it easy on us, and it looks like those conditions will likely continue as long as the new small regions that we're seeing on the sun's far side continue to stay quiet over the next few days. So that's great news. And now you GPS users, Again, if you are doing UAV drone activities with search and rescue for Hurricane Barrel, it looks like GPS uh, reception will stay pretty good for you, both on the day side and on the night side. You might need to calibrate your magnetometers often, but make sure you have some decent night lights because that moon is going to be new, and so it's going to be dark. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.